Good morning. I just said to a pilgrim now who was going back to his room with a little touch of intentional irony. Beautiful sunrise this morning. And he looked at me so serenely and he said, beautiful. He had his experience here. And he was serenely joyful and happy. Very content. And you could meet other ones who come and they come out for the sunrise and it's not even half as cloudy as this. And there's a great sense of frustration. What's going on out there? I just started to notice that's a paddleboard. It's early in the morning. I'm not sure if it's the end of the night or it's early in the morning. You have all these I can make it out, I can zoom out further. And my eyes at the my eyes are at the or zoom in further. My eyes are at the limits of understanding. Let me see if I can ask this guy here what he knows. Morning. Can you recognize what's going on out there? You can't figure it out? I have no idea. What well, there's somebody in a paddleboard, or maybe two. Yeah. And I have no idea. It's probably a youth group doing something. Good. We live with the mystery. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, but it looks cool. Where are you from? Um, Ohio. Okay, I'm doing a live stream here. If you want to say hello to the world, you're welcome. But okay. So, people... Uh, the reaction of this man actually surprised me because I was, in a certain sense, that little bit of sympathy in a way or empathy that, you know, somebody wanted to get a nice, beautiful golden sunrise and ended up with a totally overcast morning. And my presumption is that guy is a little frustrated. So I wanted to, <laughs> I don't know what I did. I said, nice sunrise this morning. And I kind of was expecting that there would be a sense of frustration. And then I would empathize with the poor guy, you know? And, uh, but he was so serene and so content, really content, truly content. And that really, uh, really, um, you know, it impressed me. How do you enter paradise? How do you, how do we, you know, life is tough. Life is hard. There's so many frustrations. I mean, this is a very tr trivial thing in a way to see the sunrise in the morning when people are engaged in war, many war theaters on our planet. That means human beings, our brothers and sisters are lifting up weapons, pointing them at each other, and firing. And the war can be with weapons that shoot bullets, physical bullets. Uh, I met a man very recently carrying a gun and he was carrying gas and he communicated to me that he feels so unsafe. And I was surprised at the intensity of his insecurity. Uh, this is a complex world. We have all our complex psychologies, you know. And it turned out afterwards that I got talking with the guy and it turned out he was a very nice guy. Lovely family. It's a lot about attitudes, how we approach realities. And we can have true burdens, really true burdens. Exhaustion stress, a lot of hardships, a lot of serious hardships, economic, financial, 
And so we have words today in the scriptures, actually all of the different readings we have today address this in the most beautiful way. And there are a couple of words there that are, are very, very beautiful. It's almost like entering paradise. You know, paradise, what's paradise? Well, some people would see a nice beach, a cooler with good drinks in it, a nice company, something entertaining going on. You know, people would say that's paradise, you know? What's paradise? So I don't think we would associate paradise with stress, with exhaustion, with worry about the future. Paradise is the opposite to all of that. And these lines in the, in the gospel today, in a certain sense, gather an incredible amount of the wisdom, the insight, the experience of God's presence throughout the whole Bible. And i just give you one more little teaser example. You know, children can be very upset. Something went really wrong for them in their little play world. Or it could be more serious, it could be from school, it could be a tussle in the yard with other kids in the playground. And there comes the parents, or the grandparents, with a big smile. And there was such a mess going on in the living room, such a civil war between two siblings over a teddy bear. And the parents come, or the grandparents, and they gather them up in their arms, and they sit them on their knees, and they start telling them a story, and a whole new perspective comes in. And as serious in their minds as their little civil war was over their teddy bear or some little toy that got broken, now in the embrace of their parents and grandparents or even older siblings are good at doing that sometimes, the little child comes to peace. And it doesn't take long to turn it into a smile. And a new start at something else. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, my burden is light. We get very wound up. Or we get very aggressive, and that's also being wound up with a plan of attack, and we're preparing cluster missiles or whatever it is. We get wound up for attack, for aggression, or we get wound up with so much anxiety and despair. Come to me, all you who are labor, who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. The only one that can say that is the one who created paradise, and the one who wants us to be in paradise forever. And that's viable and real. And already we see the style of liberator, Messiah, in Zechariah. He's not coming with a legion of cavalry or tanks or F-16s or F-18s or F whatever the next one's going to be. He's coming on a donkey, the foal of an ass. And he's coming meek and humble. I wonder if Jesus growing up in Nazareth saw some of the battalions, Roman battalions moving through the land and all the people trembling. And he was simultaneously reading, it happened to be he was reading Zechariah, the Messiah coming 
and the fall of a donkey. Not a big stallion, not the fastest horse, not the most powerful one, coming in a little donkey. With salvation, with the whole gift of salvation. Look what we have over there, listening in to our conversation, very concerned about our approaching presence. Amazing, isn't it? And then we turn to Romans, those who are led by the Spirit, not by the flesh. These purple herons are fishing birds, as you can tell. But they're also very sensitive to anybody approaching, like probably every single living being is. Every animal has those senses. And they're animated to take very seriously potential predators like us approaching. So many different positions the purple heron takes and they're all beautiful. She goes. Learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Take your yoke upon you and find rest for your souls. So much regret over academic pathways, over financial pathways, over real estate pathways, over relationship pathways. Learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Have a blessed Sunday today, even if it's all overcast. <laughs> and bring that to your homes. Make the experiment. Do the experiment. Uh, a man said to me yesterday, if you want to change the world, change yourself. Look at this catfish coming in close here. I think it's a catfish. Right in the center of the screen there. It probably has perceived me and so isn't coming any closer at the moment. It's right there in the center of the screen. It's very zoomed in right now. Oh, there's another one right beside it. And 
there's a whole bunch over here. People, we leave it like that. God bless you.